ओके सो वेलकम बैक एवरीवन उधर से जाके इधर आ गए ठीक है सो एवरीवन नोज व्हाट वी फिनिश इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव डन अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स अबाउट द बेसिस बेसिक्स ऑफ एपिडर्मिस डर्मिस हाइपोडर्मिस ग्लैंड्स ऑफ द स्किन एंड देयर डिसऑर्डर्स um then uh, pemphigus and pigmentation disorders all that is done okay so now we'll be doing mainly psoriasis uh, and little bit of autoimmune disorders and um, uh, stds that is the main part okay so sexually transmitted diseases ka 100% bahut sare questions aate hain so you should be knowing all of those so welcome back to an academy the plus subscription till everyone joins in let me just uh, do the advertising so the plus subscription will help you learn from india's top educators you can access our question bank with 25000 plus questions uh, we have printed notes available for everyone so you get uh, an option of taking prep ladder or an academy printed notes so you can take any of them with your plus subscription the iconic subscription uh, you get both benefits of an academy and prep ladder and these are a inict mock tests that are on the 17th special class features question bank meet pg toppers and these are the batches which are going on now i really want to tell you guys that next month i will be teaching anesthesia for the uh, focus fmg batch so i highly recommend all of you to come and attend over there uh, whatever i'm doing right now is a quick revision of all the subjects but there i will be teaching a little more in detail so if you feel that you are not very confident about your subjects you can come for that focus fmg batch okay ashutosh is not able to see me is everyone else able to see me so this is my code dr janvi live if you would get, like to get a 10% off on your plus subscription okay so till everyone comes yeah you guys can refresh if you are not able to see me i think majority of you can see me and hear me well correct okay so classify these skin lesions so if you have a flat skin lesion which is less than 1 cm what will you call it as you should be able to see me ha itni pretty lag rahi hu main lipstick lipstick laga ke aayi hu fir main class ke liye okay yes absolutely correct so a flat skin lesion which is less than 1 cm is called as a macule if it is more than 1 cm what is it called if it is more than 1 cm it is called as a plaque okay fluid filled small lesion fluid filled less than 1 cm lesion is called as a vesicle okay and if it is bigger than 1 cm what is it called it is called as a bulla okay all right now after this everything is going to be one name only so any solid elevation what is it called it's non fluid filled solid elevation what do you call it you call it papule okay edematous elevation elevation edema plus reddish in color especially seen after a antibiotic sensitivity test veal very good jp okay if that veal has pus in it what is it called pustule okay if skin is exfoliated removed what is it called it is called as a patch okay if there is a dried exudate of skin that is present on top that is called as a crust and ulcer everyone knows okay so these are the basics of dermatology that you should know but i don't think they will ask you the slide in the exam what they will ask you is in dermat mainly diagrams mainly photos okay so you should be knowing in and around of the photos so you guys should be able to answer it very well yes exfoliated skin is called as a patch okay all right so first question that i have for you guys so we are moving on to hair a little bit now and the important things in hair so what is the normal hair cycle what are the three phases in the normal hair cycle and how long do they last yes so you have anagen phase which is the growth phase of the hair can you tell me how much time does anagen phase last anagen catagen telogen absolutely correct also tell me how much time does anagen last how much time does catagen last and what how much time does telogen last so the growth phase of the hair is the anagen phase and it lasts for nearly 3 weeks no it lasts for 3 years okay 3 years your hair will grow after that you have the catagen phase or the resting phase here nothing is going to happen to the hair it's neither going to grow neither is it going to shed out so how long will this last this last for 3 weeks okay and then finally you have the telogen phase so telogen phase is the phase of shedding of hair so how long does this last this last for 3 months okay so first anagen then catagen then telogen what is telogen effluvium then 
is this pathological or is it normal telogen effluvium pathological or normal okay so this is pathological phase in which your body will cut down the allergen phase it will miss the catagen phase and directly go to telogen so the hair will start shedding out now this happens when you have chronic illnesses when you have severe illnesses like typhoid and especially after chemotherapy okay so your hair will end this phase of anagen wherever it is it will skip the phase of catagen directly go to telogen and start uh, losing hair okay so if you have a chronic disease are you going to Now get your hair back or no? Suppose you have typhoid or a severe disease that has happened, tuberculosis, and you were admitted in the ICU for a long period of time or COVID. Will the hair come back to its normal phase or no? Okay. So after the telogen effluvium phase is over, the hair can come back to normal. Okay. Yes, it can come back to normal. Now about hair, the most important question that they ask is about alopecia. There are four or five different types of alopecia. You should be able to recognize those in the exam. The first one that you see over here is and hereditary androgenetic alopecia. It is also called as HAA. This is the most common type of alopecia. I think in this class also half of the boys must be having this. Correct? No offense, but nearly everyone has it. Okay. So HAA may. can you tell me where is the exact baldness seen like which is the area where you see the exact baldness void <laughs> okay so it is seen here this is called as the temporal area so you have temporal balding and you have balding of the vertex okay so temporal balding and balding of the vertex specifically seen in male pattern baldness in female pattern baldness you will see balding in the center okay so you will see thinning of hair in the center parting so that is the difference between male and female pattern baldness now what is the causative agent of male pattern baldness because this is the most important cause of alopecia you should be knowing the answer to this okay so normally what happens is your testosterone gets converted to dihydrotestosterone which is the more active part and what is the enzyme that is responsible for this anyone enzyme responsible for testosterone to dihydrotestosterone yes it is 5 alpha reductase okay this dihydrotestosterone will then go and it will attach to the hair follicle and here it will arrest the growth of the hair follicle okay so the active component of testosterone will arrest the growth of the hair follicle so that's why the patient will have less amount of hair growth now this mainly depends on your genetics and the amount of dihydrotestosterone that you produce so now just looking at this flow chart can you tell me if i want to treat hereditary androgenetic alopecia what is the drug that i should be giving in that case minoxidil okay so minoxidil is correct minoxidil mechanism of action will basically be it will cause vasodilation of the vessels over here so there will be more blood flow so the drugs will uh, so the hair will grow but more importantly if i inhibit this enzyme 5 alpha reductase enzyme if i end up inhibiting this enzyme what will happen i will get very less production of dihydrotestosterone and this will not go and arrest the growth of the hair follicle okay so the main treatment is inhibitor of 5 alpha reductase and what is the name of that drug i think many of you all have already mentioned that that is nothing but finasteride okay all right minoxidil nothing but a local vasodilator uh you remember why people say you should take oil massage if you take oil massage you are doing nothing but increasing the or improving the blood circulation on the scalp so because of that the hair will grow okay all right then you can also give anti androgenics so they will completely inhibit testosterone and dihydrotestosterone so you have ciproterone acetate spironolactone flutamide but these will also have actions elsewhere okay so the patient can also come up with many important side effects if you are giving anti androgenetic so that's why we will avoid that okay okay now this is one of the most important and most frequently asked questions in dermat and that is alopecia areata i think it has been asked last year the year before that also they love asking this question it's an it's an autoimmune disorder and it is also associated with other autoimmune disorders so can you tell me which skin condition do you see in alopecia areata which skin condition is seen in alopecia areata psoriasis no 
skin condition i'm asking addisons and uh, hypothyroidism hashimotos all that is to seen only but there is lichen planus that is associated with alopecia areata okay lichen planus is one of the important dermat disorders associated with this okay and next question that they will ask is what is the exclamation hair mark sign so if you have patchy areas of hair loss so this is the area of hair loss at the end of this you will see the hair that is present at the periphery okay so this looks like a exclamation mark at the periphery so this is called as the exclamation hair mark sign okay exclamation mark sign seen in alopecia areata okay all right now what do you call this kind of alopecia in which the patient has no hair but eyebrows are present second is hair is also not present over the scalp eyebrows are also not present all over the body there is no hair present which one is totalis which one is universalis okay if you have no hair present all over your head this one is called as alopecia totalis totalis total hair loss on the head okay and if you don't have hair anywhere no eyebrows no hair in the rest part of the body axilla groin also in the whole universe you have no hair so that is called as alopecia universalis okay or right. next moving on to the important nail lesions that they ask in the exam so now i'm going to zoom in a little bit and show you guys so can you see over here there is small small pitting coarse pitting of the nails so what is this pitting called as and in which condition can you see this very good you see it in psoriasis what is the name of this pitting or it is also called as oil drop sign it is called as oil drop sign or it is also called as thimble pitting and this is seen in psoriasis okay all right this is number 1 number 2 what are you seeing over here a wing like appearance of the nail what is this called very good yash so this is called as pterygium so pterygium is seen in which disease pterygium is seen in lichen planus excellent okay here you can see the nail it is a spoon shaped nail spoon shaped nail very good so it is called as coilonychia coilonychia horrible handwriting please give me one second to correct it coilonychia seen in iron deficiency anemia absolutely correct okay next one over here what are you seeing in picture number 4 leukonychia not really leukonychia will be completely white nail seen in hypoalbuminemia here you are seeing these two white transverse lines that are present on the nails what is this called very good uh, sayantan so these are called as mees lines okay these are called as mees lines and these are seen in which poisoning white transverse lines that are present they are seen in arsenic poisoning mees line seen in arsenic poisoning okay all right now next over here if you see overall on the nails again over here you see there are many white lines and in fact this nail becomes completely white at sometimes so that is called as your muir case nails muir case nails and they are seen in hypoalbuminemia and last one can you see the nail is completely destroyed over here so what is that called this complete destruction of the nail what is it called and in which condition do you have it okay so that is called as tenia angium tenia angium is nothing but fungal infection of the nails okay and what is the causative organism for tenia angium the causative organism is trichophyton rubrum okay all right so these are all the different types of nails that they ask you in the exam now in the previous uh, lecture that we had i made you do two nevi nevus achromaticus and nevus anemicus now i want you to tell me about these kind of nevus the bluish blackish deep pigmentation ones okay so this one over here shit the answer is written over here okay theek hai jaane do this is called as nevus of ota okay now remember what is nevus nevus is nothing but collection of melanocytes 
all the melanocytes aggregate together and they collect now it depends where they collect okay so if they collect in the dermis then you are going to see a bluish colored lesion okay if they collect in the epidermis then you are going to see a brownish colored lesion hyperpigmented lesion okay anand one thing and i'll repeat it let's just finish the ey first okay so whenever you have collection of melanocytes in the dermis they are going to look greenish bluish in color okay so this lesion that you have nevi that you you have over the eye is called as nevus of ota how do i remember it over the eye ko a y e jaise yaad kar lo okay so nevus of ota is present over the eye due to collection of melanocytes in the dermis now over here can you tell me where have the melanocytes aggregated in the dermis or in the epidermis where are the melanocytes aggregated in the dermis only why because it is again bluish in color correct so this one is called as a nevus of ito okay ito is present on the back ota is present over the eye and ito is present on the back now where have the melanocytes aggregated here in the dermis or in the epidermis yes so you can see over here these are this lesion is hyperpigmented it is brownish in color so definitely here the melanocytes have not aggregated in the dermis they have uh, aggregated in the epidermis correct so this is called as your becker's nevus now this is one of the most important uh, nevi that they ask in the exam because it's seen very commonly so becker's nevus may you will see over the shoulder or over the arm there will be a brownish pigmented lesion and then there will be hair that will be present on it and usually they will talk about a pubertal male who is having it so during adolescence because of excessive production of testosterone androgen sensitivity you will have presence of becker's nevus okay ito and ota are present in different areas but the problem is the same there is aggregation of melanocytes in the dermis okay ito is present in the back ota is present on the eye okay and becker's nevus is aggregation of melanocytes in the epidermis clear okay someone wanted me to repeat the last two types of nails if you see this is muerkes nails if you i'll write m u e h r c k e muerkes nails okay these muerkes nails they are whitish nails that you see in hypoalbuminemia and the last one you will see dirty destroyed nails that is uh, called as tinea angium and this happens because of destruction of nails by fungus which is trichophyton rubrum okay all right now onico mycosis and blue show i didn't understand that i didn't understand your question ranjit okay all right now next we have psoriasis lesion so can anyone tell me how will you identify a psoriasis psoriatic lesion what are the specific features of psoriatic lesion come on tarik yes very good the very specific lesion of psoriatic lesions uh, is presence of scales so can you see over here all the whitish scales are present okay so what do you have first you should know where it will be present so mainly it is present on extensor surfaces so they will say that there is a lesion on the back of the hand or it is present on the back of the leg so these are your extensor surfaces so on there you will have ekdam as a reddish lesion on top of the erythematous lesion you will have silvery scales that are present and if you see the margin of this lesion just very closely look at it do you feel that the margin is hypopigmented thoda whitish margin hai. it is hypopigmented that is the characteristic of psoriatic lesions okay what is that ring called as that ring that is present on the periphery of the psoriatic lesion it is called as ring of voronoff absolutely correct so that hypopigmented margin that is present it is called as ring of voronoff okay so these are the characteristics of the lesion full lesion will be erythematous reddish then there will be silvery silvery white scales that are present on it and at the edge you will have a hypopigmented ring of voronoff okay now next is you do you can define those lesions into two types either stable or unstable stable means it is static it's not growing unstable means it is growing rapidly and it is spreading everywhere okay what are the exacerbating factors of 
ring of voronoff is this hypopigmented ring that is present at the edge at the edge of the margin at the margin of the lesion okay okay what are the exacerbating factors for psoriatic lesions now many people it's an autoimmune disease okay psoriasis in this you will have destruction of the uh, skin by t cells and by your uh, langerhans cells okay so many a times people have tendency for psoriasis but they don't show psoriasis so what can actually push them towards psoriatic lesions yes so if you have any exacerbating lesions like stress pregnancy chronic disease okay all of these can push you a little bit into getting the exacerbation of psoriatic lesions okay so most important thing in this entire slide is first to identify the lesion so kuch bhi silvery white scales bola na immediately tumko samajh mein aa jana chahiye ki this is psoriasis next is the types of psoriasis they love to ask questions on this so whatever are the one line of questions asked on this i will tell you so which is the most common type of psoriasis overall most common type of psoriasis psoriasis vulgaris correct it is present all over the body all extensive surfaces of the body you will have it second question that they will ask is instead of the extensor surfaces if you start getting the psoriatic lesion on the flexural surfaces okay so what is that called as very good that is called as your inverse psoriasis or flexural psoriasis so this is ulta i am writing over here ulta of normal psoriasis okay okay after that next if what is the type of psoriasis which is seen in children and the presence of the lesion looks like rain drops and the usually uh, the psoriatic lesions will come after the child gets a streptococcal pharyngitis very good that is called as your gutted psoriasis so gutted psoriasis is seen in children it is usually after an episode of strep pharyngitis and the presence of the lesion is like rain drops okay so they are also called as rain drop lesion okay now can anyone tell me after strep pharyngitis in children what is the other disease that happens we discussed in cardiology so i'm just trying to integrate that thing over here for you guys very good so you also get rheumatic heart disease okay and if after strep pharyngitis the patient uh, at the same time is getting hematuria so nephrology integrate karke bolo kya hai wo at the same time sin pharyngitic hematuria marungi sin pharyngitic mein kya hai PSGN happens two to three weeks after the uh, pharyngitis. What happens at the time of pharyngitis? Hematuria is happening. IgA nephropathy. Absolutely correct. Okay. So, ऐसे integrate करने का दिमाग में अपने. Okay. Next one. So, uh, the next question that they ask is this seborrheic psoriasis is the one that will be present on the scalp. Okay. Okay, most aggressive type of psoriasis is your erythrodermic or exfoliative psoriasis, and this has the worst prognosis. Now there is one question that they ask. So generalized pustular psoriasis. There are two names for this. Pustular means it's getting secondarily infected. Correct. So if the patient is pregnant, what is the name of the disease? And if the patient is non-pregnant, not pregnant, what is the name of generalized pustular psoriasis? There is a name for the disease. That's why. Mm hmm. Very good, Tarik. Very good, Hart. So, if the patient is pregnant and she has pustular psoriasis, you will call it as impedigo or petiformis. It has nothing to do with scarlet fever or the impetigo that you see in children. The name of this disease is impetigo or petiformis. Okay. And if the patient is not pregnant, what do you call it? then it is called as von zumbach disease von zumbach disease okay anyone what is rupeoid psoriasis rupeoid psoriasis kisko pata okay so if you have dome like lesions okay dome like lesions are present then that is called as your rupeoid psoriasis tent like lesions or dome like lesions okay all right next this is a classical feature seen in psoriatic arthritis what can you tell me about this feature what is it called as very good so your distal interphalangeal joint you can see over here 
it has become the distal phalanx has become extremely thin so this looks like a pencil and cup deformity okay so this is called as a pencil and cup deformity so this is another question that they ask about psoriasis and related to the joints there is one more thing that they ask it is also called as opera glass or champagne glass deformity सब याद रहेगा ना मैं तुमको सब एक ही जगह में लिख के दे रही हूँ सो होपफुली इट विल बी यूजफुल फॉर यू गाइज एंड टुमोरो वी विल बी डूइंग एनेस्थीजिया लाइक दिस टुडे वी आर डूइंग द होल ऑफ डर्मैट टुमोरो विल बी डूइंग द होल ऑफ एनेस्थीजिया सो टुमोरो लेक्चर्स आर एट सेवन पी एम टू एट पी एम फर्स्ट लेक्चर एंड एट थर्टी टू नाइन थर्टी नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ओके फुल एनेस्थीजिया विल डू इन मंडे ओके नेक्स्ट इज वॉट आर द टेस्ट फॉर सोरियासिस so there are three tests for psoriasis gratiaceous burkley's membrane and ospitz sign so first thing can anyone tell me what do you do in gratiaceous test ek bar wo bol diya to bas kaam ho gaya okay so what you do is ye tumhara psoriatic lesion hai correct i take a glass slide uh, like the one you get in uh, the micro lab and i start rubbing against this lesion so when i start rubbing against this lesion what will i see what will come out if i start scraping against the lesion yes so i will see presence of silvery white scales correct so the scales will start appearing so that is called as my grattage test i am going to scrape against the lesion next i keep scraping 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 and then at to a level that i see a glistening membrane so what is that glistening membrane called that is called as burkley's membrane okay and once i scrape against that glistening membrane also and i see pin point bleeding over there then that is called as my ospitz sign okay so these are the three tests in psoriasis so what do you have to do just take a glass slide and start scraping first thing you'll see is grattage second burkley's membrane and third ospitz sign clear okay now these are all the drugs that you give in psoriasis now most of the places drugs i am not going to discuss with you because it's something that you will just ratta maro and it will be done okay so the fastest acting drug is cyclosporine basically it's an autoimmune disease so you have to give immunosuppressants and steroids if the what you have to remember if the patient is pregnant then what will you be giving so if the patient is pregnant and she has pustular psoriasis what was the name of the disease impetigo herpetiformis so in that you will give her only oral corticosteroids okay you will not give any other uh, drug to her because there are chance of teratogenicity okay and if she is not pregnant for pustular psoriasis you can give acetretin okay so this is the treatment of psoriasis one last thing in psoriasis is your kobner's phenomenon so what is kobner's phenomenon now can you see over here i have a lesion over here on my hand pata nahi dikh raha hai ya nahi idhar dikh raha hai tumko idhar dikh raha hai there is a lesion over here okay now suppose i take this and i scrape it over here and i get another lesion like this over here so this is a site of trauma i am getting a similar lesion over here at the site of trauma so is this kobner's phenomenon or reverse kobner's phenomenon no it is kobner's phenomenon see okay what is happening i have a lesion over here ye patch aur idhar main aise scrape kar rahi hu so at the new site of trauma i am getting a new lesion so that is kobner's phenomenon suppose i have two lesions one year and one year i give trauma over here and this lesion goes away if it goes away that is called as reverse kobner's phenomenon disappearance of the lesion is called as reverse kobner's phenomenon theek hai and pseudo kobner's phenomenon kya hota hai ye mere exam mein aaya tha neat pg exam mein so please read this carefully they had asked me in which condition do you see pseudo kobner's phenomenon so it is seen in most of the infective conditions so isme kya hota hai i have a lesion over here already i start getting another lesion over here now i have not had any trauma over here i have not had any problem over here so i'm like yahan pe kyu dusra lesion ho raha hai so this is called as pseudo kobner's phenomenon it looks like here i've got trauma and i'm getting a lesion but aisa kuch nahi hai it's just the spread of the organism from here to here which is causing the lesion okay there is no trauma there is only spread of organism so that is pseudo kobner's phenomenon samajh mein aaya to exam mein kya puchte hain kobner's phenomenon is seen in which disease pseudo kobner's is seen in which disease okay so that is important so so all your important dermat diseases lichen planus psoriasis vitiligo you will see kobner's phenomenon 
and then in infective diseases like warts and molluscum contagiosum you will see pseudo cobnus phenomenon okay reverse cobnus kis mein dikhta hai anyone do you remember actually i have forgotten reverse cobnus kis mein dikhta hai theek <clears throat> hai i'll find out and tell you guys okay all right now identify this lesion and tell me the disease in which it is seen erythema chronicans erythema marginatum erythema multiforme or impetigo herpetiformis okay very good so what is this lesion it looks like a bull's eye have you all played darts so darts mein hota hai na it looks like a bull's eye so it is also called as bull's eye lesion or it is also called as target lesion and this is seen in which case target lesion or bull's eye lesion it is seen in erythema multiforme okay can anyone tell me erythema marginatum is seen in which disease erythema marginatum seen in the hands and legs which disease very good it is seen in rheumatic heart disease it is a part of jones criteria what was the criteria abhi i keep integrating between this and other subjects na taki tumko wo bhi yaad rahe ki exam mein to tumko sab khichdi pakka ke puchne wale hai isliye hmm yes so you, what what is the criteria you see carditis then you see sydenham scoria you see subcutaneous nodules erythema marginatum and one more thing arthritis correct arthritis carditis uh, erythema marginatum subcutaneous nodules and uh, ek aur bhul gaye <laughs> okay so that is your jones criteria corea absolutely correct sydenham scoria all right so uh, okay an erythema multiforme is seen in lyme's disease lyme's disease have you guys heard of lyme's disease what is the causative organism of lyme's disease it's caused by a tick borrelia burgdorferi yes borrelia organisms okay so it is a tick disease all right impetigo herpetiformis kya tha abhi abhi kiya pustula psoriasis seen in pregnant women okay yes okay identify this lesion present on the face of the person sle dle dermatomyositis or tuberous sclerosis Tariq is saying carpet tax sign. Tariq, tell us what is carpet tax sign. Tariq, you're right, but what is carpet tax sign? Okay, so this is a classical lesion of discoid lupus erythematosus. Okay, it's a connective tissue disorder. So discoid lupus erythematosus में क्या होता है? First of all, you will see the lesion just above the neck. Okay, so it will be present either in the neck or in the face. Second is the shape of the lesion. It will be a very particular coin-shaped lesion. Okay. Third is coin-shaped lesion के center में क्या है? Periphery में क्या है? So center में you will see all the dilated blood vessels. so those dilated blood vessels are called as telangiectasia when you have a bunch of dilated blood vessels can you see either uh, bluish green color and so those dilated blood vessels are called as telangiectatic vessels okay and periphery mein kya dikhega tumko periphery mein you will see rolled out margins so periphery mein rolled out erythematous margins samajh mein aa raha hai tumko ya nahi this will help you in diagnosing all these diseases okay If, ये देखो लीजन देखो बीच में दिख रहा है ब्लूइश ग्रीन कलर है दैट इज बिकॉज द ब्लड वेसल्स आर डाइलेटेड और एंड में क्या है पूरा ऐसे बड़े बड़े मार्जिन है रोल्ड आउट मार्जिन है सो दैट इज योर रोल्ड आउट मार्जिन एंड टेलाजेक्टेटिक वेसल एंड एकदम फुल क्वाइन शेप लीजन सो दिस इज योर डीएल और डिस्पॉइड लूपस एरथमेटोसिस लीजन ओके सो देन यू हैव सॉरी two types of dle you have localized and you have disseminated so whenever you have localized lesion it will be present mainly in the face and neck and disseminated lesion is present everywhere in the body okay it affects skin and uh, hair everything 
now again it is a connective tissue disorder so what will be the treatment treatment will be corticosteroids okay now you can give immunosuppressants also what are the immunosuppressants that you will give you have to give very specific t cell drugs anti t cell drugs so anyone what are the anti t cell drugs for this one is mycophenolate morphetal and the second one is methotrexate okay all right okay and what is carpet tax sign tarik i was waiting for your answer please explain to us what is carpet tax cat tongue sign cat tongue sign kyu hota hai wo bhi batao chalo tum log batao tab tak main poll start kar rahi hu sab aise hi fundu naam sab yaad rakhte hain and then uske baad you all will not uh answer correctly okay okay the one more treatment is hcqs also hydroxychloroquine yes absolutely correct dr aj so carpet tax sign is if you peel the lesion you will see elevations that are present below it okay so that is called as your carpet tax sign okay next one so we are talking about another connective tissue disorder over here so identify this disorder dermatomyositis dle pityriasis rosea sle now this patient she is a 25 year old young non pregnant patient who is saying that doctor whenever i go swimming i get this lesion so what is this guys tomorrow 7 o'clock anesthesia part 1 and 8:30 anesthesia part 2 7 to 8 part 1 and 8:30 to 9:30 part 2 okay okay very good so this is nothing but sle what is this particular rash of sle called as present over the malar area this is called as the butterfly rash very good this is called as butterfly rash okay now sle may any other things that will help you identify this will the patient come with any other lesions and what are the antibodies that you will try to find in her so first of all it will be a young female who on exposure to light to sunlight photosensitivity will get this lesion okay she will also present with joint pains she may also have respiratory distress uh, i means breathing problem because of pleuritis because all the pleural linings also become inflamed she may have heart disease rheumatic carditis so you know rheumatic carditis sle carditis that is also called as libman sacks endocarditis involvement of the valve she may have involvement of the kidneys so that is your lupus nephritis wire loop lesions are seen in the kidney so that is your lupus nephritis okay so, and she, she will have arthralgia so all these are the lesions that you see in case of sle so it will come as a big clinical case scenario aisa chhota sa kuch nahi aayega and this is a very peculiar rash that is present on the face okay now question that they will ask is what is the antibodies so antibodies that you will try to de detect are ana antibodies anti ds dna antibodies any other antibodies that you will try to detect in sle anti ro anti la antibodies all of them anti smith antibodies okay so all of those are the antibodies detected in sle okay next one this is dermatomyositis this also has been asked many times in your exam purplish lesions again it is a connective tissue disorder specific thing about dermatomyositis is present of purplish lesions in different parts of the body so if these purplish lesions are present on the knuckles what do you call it as gotron's papules very good if they are present on the eyelid what do you call it eyelid it is called as can you see over here on the eyelid you are having these purplish lesions so this is called as heliotrope rash okay purplish lesion present on this area behind on the back where you wear a shawl what is this called shawl sign very good and purplish lesion present in the front where you wear a t-shirt this is called as v sign okay so just like we saw previously in tuberous sclerosis your ash leaf macule chagrin patch uh coffee cafe ole spot just like that these are the four signs seen in dermatomyositis please remember this it's very very important for the exam they have asked many times okay all right now let's move on to very important topic all the sexually transmitted diseases so if a patient comes to you with this kind of painless lesion that is reddish painless lesion present on the uh, 
penis and the groin area okay so this if i'm already written over here it is granuloma inguinal or commonly called as donovanosis so what is the causative organism in this case name of the organism yes it is either klebsiella granulomatis or it can also be called as calamatobacterium granulomatis okay all right how do you describe the lesion how do you describe the lesion it is a red uh okay yes so that specifically beefy red ulcer is it painful or painless it bleeds on touch absolutely correct and it is painless okay it is a painless lesion painless bleefy red and bleeds on touch okay what is the diagnostic criteria for this disease for donovanosis there is presence of the bacteria in a very particular appearance yes so you have safety pin appearance of the bacteria and why is it called donovanosis what is specific about donovanosis yes so you have basically monocytes monocytes are a part of our immune system correct so the monocytes will hold the organism inside it so this monocyte holding the organism inside it is called as the donovan body okay so that is why this disease is also called as donovan's disease donovanosis the person who actually founded these donovan bodies his name was donovan that's why usne apna naam dal diya usme okay so donovan bodies are diagnostic of presence of uh klebsiella granulomatis disease okay what is the treatment drug of choice in this case yes so you have two drugs one is doxycycline and the second one is azithromycin okay and anyone what is bubo and what is pseudo bubo what is the difference between bubo and pseudo bubo no lap stuffy very good so bubo is whenever your inguinal lymph nodes get enlarged why are the inguinal lymph nodes getting enlarged because of the uh, immunity which is getting activated whenever there is an infection near the groin okay so if the inguinal lymph nodes get enlarged that is called as bubo if there are other swellings other than lymph nodes that is called as a pseudo bubo okay so that is not your lymph nodes getting enlarged they are just other random swellings that are present it may be pus it may be inflammation that is there but they are not enlarged lymph nodes so that is called as pseudo bubo and you see the pseudo bubo sign in granuloma inguinal okay now next question groove sign is seen in which disease again this has come multiple times in your exam so groove sign is present in which disease out of the following so are you guys enjoying this quick revision of the short subjects okay good because this week we have to finish all the short subjects okay two two hours mein we have to complete all short subjects at the end of the class since this is a special class you can download the pdf also and use it for your revision later also okay so only 61% of you have answered this correctly this is very very easy this is lymphogranuloma venerum okay so in lymphogranuloma venerum can you tell me what is the causative organism and what is the yeah so causative organism in lymphogranuloma venerum is chlamydia trachomatis and here you will get your original bubo sign not the pseudo bubo but you will get your original bubo sign in this okay now what is happening over here you can see two groups of lymph nodes that are enlarged over here so here you will see your inguinal group of lymph nodes and here you will see your femoral group of lymph nodes in between them there is a depression so either lymph nodes are enlarged either lymph nodes are enlarged beech mein there is a depression so this depression is called as groove a groove so that is why it is called as groove sign okay so just socho either enlargement hai either enlargement hai unke beech mein 
khadda hai so that khadda is called as a groove okay all right absolutely correct so at the level of the inguinal ligament you have the depression so this is your lgv or lymphogranuloma venerum caused by chlamydotrachomatis okay what is the drug of choice for treatment of genital herpes famcyclovir gancyclovir acyclovir or foscarnet and while you all answer this question answer one more question so if this is the body this is my umbilicus above the umbilicus what is the herpes virus that is responsible for causing lesions below the umbilicus what is the herpes vi virus that is responsible for causing lesions yes so everything above your umbilicus over the chest herpes ophthalmicus herpes oralis all of these are caused by hsv1 below the umbilicus mainly your genital infections are all caused by hsv2 okay all right so treatment of choice for genital herpes caused by hsv2 is acyclovir if the patient is resistant to acyclovir then what drug will you use yes no no foscarnet is the treatment okay so if he has acyclovir resistant herpes then you will give foscarnet itna puchhenge nahi tumko sirf treatment of genital herpes puchhenge mostly okay all right now this another one that they keep asking again and again and again in the exam ye bhi bahut important hai identify this lesion and there are very particular things about this lesion that we will discuss so batao kya hai ye so everyone knows that this is molluscum contagiosum correct to so, isme kya hai they are pearly white umbilicated papules that's how you identify them and they'll be mainly present over the sexual areas matlab over your genitalia uh, in uh, in the buttocks okay in the cleft of the gluteal cleft and all that okay so these are pearly white umbilicated papular lesions so umbilicated matlab you will see small small khadde on this okay now what is a causative organism it's a virus yes it is caused by pox virus okay and what is the specific feature about this so you have presence of if you take it under microscopy you will have presence of henderson patterson bodies or hp bodies okay treatment treatment antivirals de sakte acyclovir most of the times it is uh, self limiting and you can remove the lesions by cauterization okay all right next one identify this lesion in which the causative bacteria has a shoal of fish appearance on gram stain <laughs> hard chancer lgv soft chancer or granuloma inguinal अभी बताओ सबने देख लिया आंसर जब भी मैंने कट किया फिर भी थोड़े लोग कंफ्यूज हो गए ओके so the other name for soft chancer is chancroid can you tell me hard chancer is seen in which disease hard chancer is seen in which disease very good hard chancer is seen in primary syphilis okay that's a painless ulcer uh, painless lesion that you will see on the uh, genitalia so that is your hard chancer seen in primary syphilis okay soft chancer it is also called as chancroid the name of the bacteria that is the causative organism over here anyone it is hemophilus ducreae hemophilus ducreae okay and when these hemophilus ducreae get together they look like a shoal of fish that are going or it is also called as railroad track appearance they arrange like this like a railroad 
Okay, so it is also called as railroad track appearance. Treatment. Treatment for chancroid or soft chancre. Azithromycin. Very good. Okay. All right. Now, a little bit about syphilis. Primary, secondary, tertiary cut. Just tell me what are the lesions. So, what is the causative organism? Everyone knows it is treponema pallidum. Okay. In primary syphilis, what is the lesion called as? That also we discussed. It is called as heart chancre. Correct. It is a painless hard lesion that is present on the genitalia. Now, what is the most sensitive and specific test to diagnose? Now, I always get a lot of different different answers in this. So, I want to know from you guys. Kya pata hai okay. Now, according to me, the most specific test is your dark ground illumination. Okay, so under your dark ground illumination, you will be able to see the spirochete and its motion. But I am not the expert in this because the thing keeps on changing again and again. So you can speak to Dr. Cheshta. Uh, she is our dermat educator. She will be very well be able to answer this question for you. What is the most sensitive and specific test to diagnose primary syphilis? Okay, she's there on our telegram group. Let's crack meet PG. So you guys can join her over all of us over there. We have all different subjects over there. If you have any doubt on Telegram, you can ask us over there. And we also post our classes. OK, all right. So in secondary syphilis, that was the lesion for primary syphilis. So for secondary syphilis, can you tell me what is the lesion? This is the gluteal cleft of the patient. And you can see these lesions over here. So what is it called? Gamma. No, this is called as condyloma lata, condyloma lata. Okay, and you are seeing this kind of alopecia. Can you see again? Chota, 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 chota patterns of hair loss. This is called as moth eaten alopecia. Okay, and there is one more sign that you see in secondary syphilis, and that is Bushke Ollendorf sign. So, Bushke Ollendorf sign is nothing but deep dermal tenderness. So, on the shin of the tibia, the anterior part of the leg, if you press it, Jorka, okay. So the patient will have pain. So that is called as deep dermal tenderness, Bushke Ollendorf sign. Okay. So these are the three things that you will see in case of secondary syphilis, condyloma lata, deep dermal tenderness, and moth eaten alopecia. Okay. All right. Next, tertiary syphilis. In tertiary syphilis, all the major um, organ systems will start getting involved. So you have cardiovascular system getting involved, neuro. Uh, vascular system getting involved in presence of gamma, which is the lesion that will carry the organisms. Correct. So, can you tell me what is neurosyphilis also called as? What is the name of neurosyphilis? Tabes dorsalis. Very good. Okay. In cardiovascular syphilis, what is the most important valvular problem that happens? Most important valvular heart disease in cardiovascular syphilis. Stenosis or regurgitation? Very good, it is regurgitation. Okay. And gamma is nothing but a solitary non infectious lesion. Okay. Now, congenital syphilis and its signs. So, quickly, can you tell me notched upper incisors? What is it called? Hutchinson's. Teeth. Okay. Snuffles. Here you can see three things. One is saddle nose. Second thing is snuffles. So you see the patient is having nasal discharge. And on the angle of the mouth, you have a lesion. What is that called? Regards. Okay. This is called as regards. Okay. And anterior bowing of the tibia. What is this called? Clutton's joints, yes, I forgot Clutton's joints, but anterior bowing of the tibia is called as saber tibia. Okay, saber tibia. All right. Now moving on to lichen planus. So, can you describe the lesions of lichen planus? Anyone? Yes, so five P's, they are purplish, they are planar. They are papular, they are pruritic, itchy, and 
Flaklik. Anand was asking, can you explain saber tibia? Okay, there's nothing to explain. There is anterior bowing of the tibia. Normally, can you see your tibia? It's straight. In case of patients with congenital syphilis, you will see that the tibia is little bowing like this anteriorly because of softening of the bones. Okay, so it is like this. So it is called as anterior bowing. It is curved. Okay, so this is our lesions of lichen planus. Another two important pictures that you should know in lichen planus. One we have already discussed. You can see a wing-like lesion present on the nail. So that is your pterygium. And second thing, what you're seeing over here in the mouth, what do you see on the mucous membranes? Very important. So you see white lacy pattern on the mucous membranes. Okay. All right. What is the associated cancer with uh, lichen planus? Anyone? Cancer. Hep B, Hep C is associated, but it's not the associated cancer. It is squamous cell carcinoma of the skin. Okay. And treatment, again, it is autoimmune disease. So again, treatment will be by corticosteroids. Sub jaga corticosteroids, steroids, steroids. Uske baad, steroids lene se kya hoga? Wo hum 8 o'clock aaj discuss karenge on YouTube. Cushing syndrome. Okay. All right. <laughs> then next thing uh, about urticaria okay so urticaria ka two lesions i wanted to show you guys urticaria is nothing but itching hypersensitivity reaction okay so i've given you the definitions over here wheel formation is characteristic acute urticaria means it's happening in less than six weeks what are the causes blah blah blah, blah. all that is theory part but you need to know the images mainly okay so this is angioneurotic angioedema okay all the blood vessels suddenly are getting dilated because of histamine that is released and this is usually seen in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so whenever you see this kind of lesion matlab your patient is having a very bad allergic reaction okay so this is called as angioedema and what is dermographism if i take a uh, key when I write on the back of the patient with that key or a scratch on the back of the patient, you will see this very characteristic wheel formation. Okay. So this is called as dermographism. Suddenly full wheel will be formed. Why? Because they are very sensitive. So there is sudden release of histamine from the cells and you will have presence of this. Okay. All right. Uh, what is the treatment of urticaria, antihistaminics, corticosteroids, epinephrine, epinephrine antilocotrines like Montelukas? And question asked is mainly about anti-IgE antibody that is important and that is your omalizumab okay all right now about atopic dermatitis specific thing that they ask in the clinical history they will say there's family history of allergies asthma hay fever food allergies what is the dermat lesion that you see in atopic dermatitis so this is a very specific one that is asked multiple times in the exam this is called as headlight sign Headlight sign means around this area, you will see perioral pallor, okay? Perioral pallor. So around the area of the mouth, you will see pallor. So that is called as your headlight sign. And another sign that you see in atopic dermatitis, you will see thinning of the lateral part of the eyebrows, okay? So that is called as Hertuge sign. Both of these are seen in case of atopic dermatitis, okay? And last, we have contact dermatitis. So they will give you a clinical case scenario patient is washing uh, vessels every day and then she is getting a lot of itching in her hands, scaling in the hands. So what is it? It is contact dermatitis. What kind of hypersensitivity reaction it is? It is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, usually seen to detergents. And treatment is same, corticosteroids and antihistamines. Okay? So I think we have discussed like 90% of dermat. Of course, we must have left 5-10% of it, some topics, but most of the important topics in Dermat we have completed in two hours. I hope that both the STDs we did not stuffy, your molascum contagiosum and your uh, syphilis, your all that. STD kits, okay. I have not put STD kits, I'm really sorry, but I have a short video on YouTube. You can put STD kits mnemonic. I have given a mnemonic to remember the STD kits for you guys. So you can watch it over there also. Okay. So in two hours, 90% of dermat done. Don't forget to download the PDF. Use it for your revision. And 
वो एनेस्थीजिया में कर देना तो एनेस्थीजिया किस में करूंगी फिर ठीक है कुछ ना कुछ तो छूटने ही वाला है बट मोस्टली तुम्हारा सब कुछ कवर हो जाएगा इन दीज रिविजन सेशन इफ यू कम एवरी डे यू विल फिनिश नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ योर शॉर्ट सब्जेक्ट ओके सो टुमोरो वी विल डू एनेसिया एट सेवन ओ क्लॉक ओके सो थैंक यू सो मच गाइज एंड आई शैल सी यू एट एट पी एम टूडे एट टू नाइन थर्टी वी विल बी डूइंग एंडोक्राइनोलॉजी फ्रॉम मेडिसिन ऑन यूट्यूब थैंक यू सो मच एंड आई शैल सी यू देन ऑन यूट्यूब बाय बाय